A stroll down the produce aisle at Bow Street Market in Freeport, and it becomes obvious there are plenty of main grown items. Flowers, strawberries, basil. We just now started getting in some organic queen bee tomatoes, uh, locally grown right here in Freeport. Store manager Jim Fry says they stock local whenever they can. But Maine's short growing season limits what grocers can stock and sell. Cantaloupes are coming from um, probably California. You, your apples are coming from Washington State most likely. We probably have slightly over 100 local vendors. That might sound like a lot, but hundreds of other vendors are from away, like the cereal coming from Washington State. It turns out 90% of the food sold in Maine is imported. In order to supply the consumer with what their needs are, yeah, absolutely. We have to, we have to source from states that can produce food um, more months out of the year than Maine can. Almost every town has its own farmer's market these days, but when it comes to homegrown and sold produce, it barely makes a dent when it comes to how much food we actually consume. In order for Maine to compete on a larger scale... You need more greenhouses. <laughs> like, you know, backyard farms and Olivia's Garden. Olivia's Garden, named after Scott Howard's daughter Olivia, started in his backyard in 1997 and has grown to this 18,000 square foot greenhouse on the Pylon Farms property in New Gloucester. It's a hard thing to do. It's hard to go up against agribusiness. But Howard is giving it his best shot. He's added product to include all kinds of lettuce, pukes, and peepaw. We do a lot of the Hannaford stores all the way from Topsom down to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. He tapped into Maine's farm-to-table movement, supplying restaurants on a regular basis all year long. Those are herbs, so that's uh, fennel and oregano. Jason Lilly is with the University of Maine Cooperative Extension, an organization keeping watch over our state's agricultural industry. Much of what they do is help young farmers succeed teaching farmers how to diversify in the changing marketplace. There's even a course called Wholesale 101, what to do with all those tomatoes. Instead of just selling your tomatoes, there's a, always a glut of tomatoes in, uh, or way too many tomatoes in you know, August and early September, that if they can take that product and turn it into something like tomato paste or salsa, um, that that's going to be better, work out better for them as far as marketing those products. I'm Jim Keithley, WMTW News 8.